The name of this story is The Bad Son. Once upon a time, during the Buddha's time, there was a king. His name was King Pimpisara. He was actually a really good king and he supported the Buddha and the religion really well. Earlier on, he got to meet the Buddha because he asked for it. He said, hey, if the Buddha became enlightened, I want to be one of the first people to meet him after he comes as a Buddha. After he met him, the Buddha gave an awesome sermon and King Pimbisara became level one enlightened, a Sotapanna. So now he's enlightened. Later on, King Pimbisara had a son. His name was Achatsatu. Now, as time passed, King Pimbisara loved his son a lot. But like most young people, what happens? They have their own ego, they have an attitude, they want to do things their way, they don't want to listen to their parents. This happens to most kids and most young people. Well, he also got a bad role model. One of the bad monks, the evil monk named Tewatat, the Buddha's enemy, right? And so Tewatat wanted to become famous and he wanted to become powerful. But he realized that everyone supported the Buddha, not him. And the Buddha had many kings. He had, he had King Pasenadi, he had King Pimpisara, he had so, uh, King Udena, he had so many kings supporting him. But Tewatat didn't have any kings, so you know what he did, decided to do? He went for the prince instead. So instead of going to the king, he went to the prince, Prince Achatsatu, and talked to him and showed him some miracles. And after he showed him some powers, Prince Achatsatu was like, oh gosh, I love this guy, I'm going to become his student. And so Prince Achatsatu began supporting Tewatat. Well, what happens when you have bad teachers or bad friends? They give you bad advice. They tell you bad things. Tewatat wanted to become the leader of the Sangha, of the monks. So he told Achatsatu, hey, we need to do some stuff. You need to become king. And so Achatsatu become king. You will, you will. Just grow up a little bit more, focus on your studies, you know, learn a lot, become a good person. And when the time is right, I'll give you the kingdom. One time said, you're my only son. I love you. I will give you the kingdom. But Achazathu says, no, I'm ready now. I want it now. And the king says, you're not ready. Tewatat was whispering a lot of evil things. Give it to you, you take it by evil. So he ordered the, the soldiers to lock his father in a prison in the top level of a seven-story building, locked him in there. At first, the soldiers were like, don't betray our king. You know, we're loyal to our king. But the king says, I don't want to have a fight. I don't want anyone to die. I don't want anyone to get hurt because that's what a good king is. He doesn't want people to get hurt. And so he says, if my son really wants it and wants to put me in jail, I will go to jail willingly. And so the king went to the prison by himself. So he was in there for a while, but he didn't die. So then Achazatu says, hey, how come he's still alive? So he says, you know what? Number to start this, no more food. Stop giving him food, he's gonna die in seven days. But the king had a wife who was very loyal to him. So every day the wife would go inside the prison and bring food inside her clothes and she would visit her husband and she would bring him food so he would still eat. After like two weeks, Prince Achasatu was like, hey, how come my dad's not dead? He should be dead by now. And then he realized that the mom was sneaking in food. So now they made sure to search the mom before she goes in. So when they see her at the door, take out all the chicken wings and all the macaroni and cheese, they take out all the food first. Well now when she goes in, somehow he was still surviving. You know what she did? she would take butter and like uh, kind of like fat and butter and put it on her hair. And then when she went inside, she, he would be able to like kind of take it off of her hair and then eat it to kind of sustain so he wouldn't die. But even after that, he, the prince caught her and said, you know what, you're supporting the king. We want him to die. You cannot visit him anymore. And so she stopped visiting him, but he still didn't die. Do you know what he was doing? Every day he was walking back and forth. He was looking out the window at the temple and he was feeling so happy that he got born to the world that has a Buddha. He got a chance to listen to the Buddha. He got a chance to become enlightened. And that happiness made him not think about the hunger. And so for seven days, he still survived again. And Prince Achatsatu was like, what happened? How come he's not dying yet? I, I've done everything. So he decided to do one more thing. 
he took a big knife and had the soldiers cut the king's foot on the bottom, like take a big cut so he can't walk. So now the king's laying in his place, can't walk, suffering and dying. But something weird happened. Around that time, Achazatu had his own wife and she was pregnant. So at the time that he cuts his dad's foot, guess what happened? His wife had a baby. And they called him and said, Prince, Prince, come look, your wife is having a baby. And he would run to the baby and pick up a baby boy. He picked up the baby boy and he hugged the baby boy and he said, oh, I love my son so much. He felt what it felt like to be a father. And he loved his son and he wanted to give everything to his son and he wanted to protect his son. That very moment that he felt the feeling of a father, he thought about his own father and how much his father loved him and how his father was always good to him. So Achazatu felt bad. So he said, soldiers, go up there. Let my father out. I was wrong. I was wrong. Let him out. Let him out. But when they went up there, guess what they found? He was gone. He was dead. Prince Achazatu is now the king, but he's so sad because he did one of the five, remember? One of the five things you cannot do in Buddhism. Do you remember what they were? One of the five unforgivable, heaviest crimes of Buddhism is just what? Killing your father, killing your mother, killing an arahan. You guys remember? Making a Buddha bleed or causing the, destroying the religion, basically. If you break these five, you go to the lowest hell and for a long time, and it's really bad. And so Prince Achatsatu felt so bad. So he dedicated the rest of his life to be a good person. He helped support the religion. He helped protect the religion. He did so much good. But if you do a lot of good, can it erase the bad that you did? No, they're separate. So after he goes to hell for a long time, the next time he's reborn, he will be an Arahan also. He will become enlightened too. But he has to pay for his crime first. And he is a story for us to see also of if you hang out with the wrong people, bad people, you have bad teachers, you don't respect your parents, you create great sin. Even if you do a lot of good in the end, it cannot cover up for the bad that you do. Smart people will not do bad. Because when you do bad, the penalty is not fun. And so, make sure that we do good things. We listen to people who warn us of things that we shouldn't do. Because karma is fair. If you do bad things, you get a bad punishment. If you do good things, you get good rewards. So would a smart person do bad things? No. Why? Because we don't want the penalty. We don't want to get in trouble. So then we don't do bad things. Would a smart people do good things? Why? because we want good results. Does that make sense? Okay, Satu, let's receive the blessing, okay?